good with y'all thank y'all for tuning in for another video today i'm hitting y'all with an informational video and uh it really come in handy it really come in handy when you changing uh your rim size or whatever i don't care if you're going on mud ties you're going big rims like i'm about to show y'all this stuff affects your rim gear ratio and you know sometimes you might want to know what kind of rpms you're gonna you're gonna be looking at running about 60 65 mile per hour so today whole purpose of this video i'm about to show y'all or uh, tell you how to calculate that you know and uh you can kind of see where you at car it, it definitely come in handy when you choosing a uh rear end gear so check this video out stay tuned in i appreciate y'all let's get to it all right so y'all see we got the big boys out today the 28s right so today i want to tell y'all how when you go from let me go over here when you go from this to this, it affects big time. So, let me get the tape measure, and uh, I'm gonna show y'all some stuff. All right. So look, this tie right here, kind of, it ain't quite. It is. It's kind of flat. But basically, hold on. Let me get my tape measure straight. All right. Look, this is the equivalent of a 28, 10, 5 tire. You talking about slick when racing? It's like a 28. It's flat though, but it's flat. But you know, y'all kind of see how tall it is. Uh, it's right at looking like 23. I'm gonna say 23 inches. 23 inches tall. Uh, flat. Let's go over here to this 20, 28 with the tie on it. See how tall this 28 is. Let me get this. Hold on, I'm trying to. So this 28 like 30 inches tall so this right here 30 inches with the tie on it like 30 inches tall yes yeah, 28 inch rim but when you're talking about this skinny or low profile tie 30 inches tall so naturally that rim that gear back there in that rear end is going to change when you change the tires it's just come on man it's, it's going to change so i'm about to tell y'all how this going to affect everything like no matter what car when you run, mounting big rims on your car it could be a 26 could be a 28 a 30 a 24 uh, it's going to change your rear end gear ratio so if you got 410s it's going to change where your rpms at if you got 373 342s it's going to change that so i'm about to uh show y'all how you calculate that okay look now get your notepad out i'm gonna put it on the screen too but i want to show y'all how to calculate this and it based on this is going to be based on like 65, running 65 mile per hour. And you can go check a chart out. You can just Google and check a chart out and everything. But first you need to know your uh, diameter. The diameter. I mean, you can't just take a you can't just take a tape measure like I did and just get the diameter. So it's a formula you got to use. So what you do, you look on your tire. So you look, you find your tire size. This first number is your width. They call it, the, the proper term is cross-sectional cross-sectional width but we're gonna keep it simple so this your width this the width of the tire 275 so you take this and as i explain i'm gonna pop it up on the screen and i'll be dividing right now while I'm talking y'all so you take that number first 275 and then what you do is multiply it by this number your second number which is your aspect height your ratio height basically right there i'm trying to make sure it focuses so you take the 275 and then you go by your height right here which is 25 in my case but what you do you don't multiply it by straight 25 that second number you do 0 0.25 in my case so you multiply 275 by 0 0.25 and then you multiply that by 2 so take that and multiply it by 2 and after that you then divide it by 25 i believe 25.4 25.4 all right then you take that number and then you go by the uh the size of your wheel in my case it's 28 28 which would be your last number whatever size wheels you run you multiply that number by 28 and i got a total height of 33.41 well diameter diameter 33.41 so that's how you get your wheel diameter you round down so basically it's 33 inch wheel diameter then you can go google or look up a chart 
you know, like I said, it's based on, it's based on uh, pretty much 65 running 65 mile per hour, a chart like so. You probably can't focus, but I mean you can't see, but a chart like so. But in my case, like I said, you can Google this. You can go Google a uh, gear ratio chart or whatever like that. And in my case, uh, 33 inch, it says with a 410, which is supposed to be in this car. I mean, you can know what you want to put in your car, but with a 410, it says at uh, 60 mile per hour, I'll be running 2720. So 27, well, it's based on a manual transmission too. So, so it says, it basically says, with a 33 inch diameter tire, if I put a 411 gear in my car, which this car has a 410, if I put a 411 gear in the car with the manual transmission at 65 mile per hour, I should be running like 2700 RPMs. I'm just keeping it simple. It say 2720, but I'm keeping it simple. But that's with the manual transmission. A manual transmission uh, brings that number, brings the RPMs down lower due to the gear inside the transmission. And if you automatic, it's automatically going to be higher. So let's just say I'm going to be at 28, 2900 RPM. If you're running a 28 or uh, 28 inch rim, like I said, with this size tire, then, you know, I probably be running 2800 RPMs at 65 mile per hour, which ain't bad. But you also have to factor in whether you got an overdrive transmission or you got a three speed. So with the with the uh, overdrive, you know, that'll bring the number down some too. That's why a lot of people like to go for overdrive transmission. I'm not a fan of them because I like performance. I lean more toward the performance side. And yeah, you can get them built and get them done. But truth of the matter is, when you get to X amount of horsepower, they're not going to hold up. I don't care if it's a 4L80 or 700 R4. You got the top of the line, best of the best. When you're talking about high horsepower applications, why you think you don't see those? They go, they start putting gear vendors in them. It's a little device called a gear vendor, if people don't know, and it gives you an extra gear or whatever. But they still using three speeds and power glides and stuff like that because they just stronger, they stronger transmissions. But, you know, it's all depending on what you're doing and, you know, the horsepower you're making. But I thought this would be real informative, real informative video because a lot of guys know that, you know, we... Uh, we put these big rims on or you put big rims on or whatever and you don't even know what kind of effect it's having especially if you got a stock rear end back there I mean if you want to just keep it common sense without all the formulas it's going to drop your gear ratio basically it's going to drop it because these gear ratios these ring and pinion gears they based on like you know 15s basically 15s with a normal size tire on even when you're getting into trucks you know lifted trucks and you put 33s and 34s on it's gonna change the gear ratio. So, that's what I'm saying. When you go into these big boy rims, that formula, like I said, I popped it up on the screen, that formula is actually real good to use so you know what kind of rear end gear you wanna choose. I mean, you can kinda of do the work ahead of time. Like in my case with the big rim bill, not this car, I'm not putting these rims on this car for people watching, but the big rim bill, like that car supposedly has a 373 or a 410, I can't remember. But I just was informed by the person that originally put the car together. I mean, he watches the video too. Shout out to him. He uh, recently hit me, said at the time he had it and put it together, it was a 430. So if it's a 430 gear in that car, it definitely got to come out. But common sense, it when you go to a tire this big, rim and tire, it drops your gear ratio. So if you got a 410, you pretty much can look for it to drop down in threes. Not a huge drop, but it dropped down in threes. But people mainly worried about uh, the RPMs and all of that. So, I mean, I know it's a lot of talking, but hey, man, if you don't, it, you can't learn if you don't listen, basically. You can't learn if you don't listen. Ain't nobody out there that know it all. I've been knowing this stuff right here a long time because, you know, I had to know it. I've been riding rims a long time. Or uh, racing and stuff even with racing when you change your slicks if you go from a 28 to a 29 inch slick it changes everything so you know i've been knowing this stuff and i try to educate people that's watching because it's somebody watching that don't know this so man keep it respectful in the comments man everybody don't know what you know so you know you got to keep that in mind it, we all learned at one point in time i didn't know this stuff but you riding these big rims just because you got a big rim car this stuff good to know especially if you got a stock motor or something you need a uh, taller gear to help take stress off of that motor 
rear end gear is so important in so many ways it takes stress off of the motor and the, the uh, transmission it takes stress off of the drivetrain period if you got a lower horsepower motor then yeah you probably gonna need a taller gear you're gonna need a taller gear or whatever to take the strain out the motor because you adding in these things heavy you're adding a lot of weight these bad boys heavy so you know you you taking these and put them on a 250 horsepower rear wheel horsepower car from the factory they wasn't made for all of that so changing that rear end gear helps but you know that's that formula you can use it to kind of tell you where your rpm is going to be at or how fast you're going to be running on the highway or you can take a look at the chart and be like oh this too high of rpm for me and then you can just choose what gear you just if you want to see where you're going to be at all you got to do is change the uh you know what i'm saying just look at the chart just reference the chart after you find out your tire diameter so to reiterate the first number oh yeah all right the first number right here is your width the width so you take this number the first number you multiply it by point whatever this number is so if you got if it's a, a 275 60 or 275 in our case we run big rims 26 most of us gonna run a 25 series tire so you'll do a 275 times 0.25 not 25 point two uh two five so two seventy five times point two five times two and then you divide it by twenty five point four and then you take that number and you multiply it by whatever size rim you got so if it's twenty six then you take that number and you add twenty six to it or add fifteen or add twenty eight or add thirty whatever size rims you got then that'll give you your tie diameter and after that after you got the tire diameter, you can you can look up a gear ratio chart, and the rest easy. It'll tell you where your RPM is going to be at based on pretty much running 65 mile per hour. So, short video, informative video, but I wanted to make some. I'm trying to keep it mixed up for y'all. I gave y'all three Camaro videos. So, I'm trying to, hey, I like all of this stuff. I like big rims and all that, which is why I'm doing the budget big rim build. And I want to tell my guys that like this stuff or guys that like big tires, because I'm putting big tires on my uh, F-150. I'm lifting it up, and I'm going to put some, probably some 26s or some 24 by 12s on the uh, F-150. So this going to matter too. It matter to uh, the truck guys too. So I thought this would be real informative, man, trying to keep it mixed up. Like I said, I hope y'all enjoyed that Camaro video. Uh, Camaro did his thing at the track, I must say. That car got a lot left in it. A lot left, man. I was happy. You ain't saw the video. I drove it 89 miles to the track. 178, no, no, 179 miles round trip. True street car, turbo. I'm doing what everybody else ain't doing. No trailers, none of that. Same thing when I do my budget big rim bill. I'm driving that car. I'm driving it. No trailers. No trailers, man. So... Hope y'all enjoying the video. Uh, shout out to everybody that subscribed and showing love in the comments and everything. I'm reading everything. Uh, like the videos, man. I appreciate all y'all liking the videos and sharing and all of that. Uh, next next video I drop, probably going to be a new uh, Big Rim Budget Bill episode. Because we working on the motor now. The bottom end probably y'all get is put together or y'all going to see it get put together. So we about to start showing some engine videos now. Like I said, so stay tuned in. Oh, I probably got two more videos dropping this week. Uh, Y'all ain't going to get one every day. I know that weather finna be bad. Oh, I got a video, another video dropping on the Camaro 2 car. I did get my CO2 bottle field. So I got CO2. I'm going to show y'all how to change the wastegate spring and all that. Because this stuff important. You cannot run CO2 with a big spring in it like you got to have a small spring in it so i'm gonna be talking about all that i'm trying to teach y'all so don't nobody make no mistakes or you ain't got to go all over the internet looking for the information but i hope y'all enjoyed the video man i know it kind of short i know i'm talking a lot in this one somebody said i talk talk a lot man <laughs> like i said you can't learn and listen with your mouth running when somebody's trying to give you the game so you keep that in mind if you want them people think i talk too much you can't learn nothing you can't learn nothing if you ain't willing to listen. So you think about that. And don't nobody know it all. Yeah, that way. Like they say, don't nobody know it all for real. So if you can't listen, you're going you're gonna to end up not knowing something, basically. 
think about it. But anyway, that's enough of that. Hope y'all enjoying the video. I'm out.